Well, the country is mourning the loss, of course, of Senator John McCain. Uh, not surprising, given the uh, diagnosis of a relatively rare form of brain cancer uh, he was diagnosed with last year. We've got Dr. Andrew Brenner, a neuro-oncologist at Texas Oncology's Austin Brain Tumor Center with us this morning. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Uh, Talking about the glioblastoma uh, that the Senator McCain announced he had last year, tell us a little bit about that type of cancer, well, symptoms and diagnosis. Yeah, glioblastoma is uh, the uh, most common malignant brain tumor, uh, unfortunately, and it is a highly aggressive uh, tumor type. It's a, a type of astrocytoma derived from astrocytes, and uh, we have four different grades, and glioblastoma is the highest grade, grade four. And uh, the real problem we have with that particular tumor type is it is very infiltrative. In other words, it really makes its way through the brain pretty easily. And the brain is precious territory, and uh, it can't repair itself. So uh, when it does that, uh, it causes a lot of symptoms and a lot of burden to the patient. And then on top of that, it tends to be relatively resistant to treatment. And uh, while many patients can uh, get significant improvement with chemotherapy and radiation and surgery, uh, unfortunately, our treatments as of today are not curative. Yeah, and it, it's, a, it's a tough diagnosis. It is a very serious, tough diagnosis. Outcome is usually not good. Yeah, that's true. And the, and the outcome, there, there are a lot of different biological factors that we can look at in an individual person's tumor, but uh, one of the most obvious things is a person's age. And a uh, recent study looking at uh, patients over the age of 65, uh, it was uh, seen that uh, they only survived a little over nine months. Now, that doesn't mean that some patients can't do significantly better. And we have a number of uh, very exciting clinical trials on our, uh, that are ongoing that might be changing the landscape a little bit, including uh, vaccine studies as well as targeted therapies that we're using. Yeah, it, it's something because so many times when we have people on to talk any, about any type of cancer, so many different types, the news is exciting these days. Hey, we're, we've had this breakthrough that we didn't have just a few years ago. Our outcomes are getting better. So we're used to hearing good news when it comes to the fight against cancer. It's lagging maybe a little bit here, unfortunately. You're, you're absolutely right. We are uh, working very hard for uh, uh, improving survival for our brain tumor patients, but there has been a lag compared to many other therapies where, for example, immune therapies have made tremendous uh, advances in terms of survival. Those don't work for brain tumors, so we're looking at different avenues. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll have some very positive news to report in the near future, a number of studies that are ongoing. Yeah, these are some of the symptoms that you will commonly see, uh, headaches, nausea and vomiting, seizures. Uh, I, I just read some of Senator McCain's book this weekend. He talked about memory loss, being in a fog yeah. leading up to this diagnosis. And it, it depends on the, the uh, for brain tumors, it depends on how rapidly growing they are and the characteristics of them. Uh, more slow growing tumors will tend to present with seizures uh, or more indolent uh, type symptoms, but the more rapid ones, patients have symptoms that might even resemble stroke, where they could have uh, loss of uh, vision, speech, hearing, uh, loss of strength in an arm or leg, uh, numbness, difficulty walking. And uh, But the difference with the stroke is a stroke is relatively rapid evolving. It happens over minutes, whereas with a brain tumor, you're talking about progression of symptoms over hours to days or even longer. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of times patients will present to the emergency room for stroke evaluation. Yeah. It is important to go get that checked out. Obviously, yes. we, we want to say most of the times when you have any of those symptoms, this is not what that is. That's exactly but you right. do want to get it checked out. And if, unfortunately, this is what it is, the, the work still goes on to, to improve quality of life for as long as possible exactly. and to give a bit of hope. You say you have had patients who who have been successful fighting this disease over years. So you do never know. You don't know, and uh, we have uh, many patients that are five years out or more, and so while we can't make any promises for any individual patient, we know that therapy in general does improve survival, mm -hmm. uh, and so we uh, are able to offer that. Yeah, hope uh, to, to prolong life and quality of life as we wait for those breakthroughs that we will hopefully see uh, in these years to come. Uh, Dr. Brennan, thank you so much for My your pleasure. Uh, insight. We appreciate it. We're going to be right back.